Guarantee you that. He got to the 25 yard line before he was brought down. And he's going to come out of the game and probably to stay. Well, they might, he might see a little, he looks like he got his bell rung possibly a little bit there. Nice little lick by Shannon right there to put some leather on him. But it, uh, precautionary statement, I think he's got over 100 yards right now. They might keep him out. If they don't need him, might be a, 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 might be a 110. I've, I've been added right now, 110 yards. It's not a bad afternoon against a good defense. That's right. Stephen Sarton will uh, mark the signals with a new set of down. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Handoff to Wright. Bradley Wright's got some running room. Gets to the 15-yard uh, line, close to a first down. You know, we have different types of running backs in the Schulenburg backfield, but they're all going to have their own niche where they're going to hurt you. Uh, there, there's nobody. You don't lose a lot when you take them out. There's somebody that comes in and does their style of running and still gains your yards for you. Maybe it's not the explosive big run, but it's still positive pounding yards. Good-looking run that time by Bradley Wright. You're so right. Now number seven comes into the game, Eric Aiding, with the play from Coach Hoosman. Clock shows 10.50 to go in the ball game. Schulenberg in full control, 30 to nothing. Aiding is wide to the right side. Jackson in a slot on the right side. Sarton with a handoff to Reigns. Reigns over the left side, not much running room at all. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. It's going to be close. It's going to be third and short again. Uh, the line's doing a fine job tonight. We, the line never gets enough recognition, Dan. Is it, I don't know. I played line in high school and everything. That, the backs always get the headline, score this, but you've got to hand it to these hogs from Schulenburg, the regulators, as we so call them here. They regulated the game tonight and took the game into their hands, and they're doing a, a fine job against the fine China defense and, and opening some nice holes for these backs. See if we can get a first down here. Third and one for Schulenburg. Hand off to Reigns. If he got it, he did it on his own. A lot of good leg power there. He was hit in the backfield, and... Looks like he lunged with some good leg. That's what the, right, the weight room pays off right there, Dan. That's, that's proof of the weight room. We'll see if he got it on the, depending on the spot. I think he's got a first down. Or he took a couple of Shiner Comanches with him. They had him uh, bottled up in the backfield, and as you mentioned, he just swung all measure. the way. They're going to measure. Going to be our first measurement of the night here as Schulenberg hopes to get a first down here. Ball is spotted just inside the 15-yard line. I believe he may have gotten it, Jeff. It's going to be, depending on the spot, it's kind of hard to tell from here with the, the field the way it is. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't get to cut the grass like we talked about earlier because of the, the wetness out here. First down. Looks like he's got just enough. You're right. Pretty big first down. Well, obviously, you're in that part of the field where you'd go for it anyway. But More uh, than likely. For Schulenberg, a new set of downs working from their 15-yard line. Eric Aiding going wide to the right side. Marek is tight left. Jamie Jackson's in a slot on the right side. It's Reigns and Houston in the backfield. Houston's back in the ball game now. And Sarton barks the signals from just inside the 15. Pitches to Reigns, right side. Gets by one man. Now he gets by going. another, and he's in for a touchdown. Good looking run by uh, David Reigns. He so pulled away from some players that looked like he was going to be tackled with a minimal gain, four or five yards, and made a nice effort, just pulled away from a few guys and had a waltz in the end zone. Schulenberg goes ahead, 36 to nothing. The try for the extra point here by Barry Shepard. Number 68, Donovan Kujay will snap the ball. Steven Sarton will hold. And number 34, Barry Shepard will attempt the extra point. Schulenberg using that familiar swinging gate uh, that they've used for, gosh, I guess it's been six, seven years now. Shepard, extra point, looks good, it is good, and just thorough domination by the Schulenberg Shorthorns. They lead 37 to nothing. Sh Schulenberg in full control, 37 to nothing as they wait to kick off. As you can see, but we talked about, Schulenberg came out in full force to support their horns. Uh, you can't say enough about what it brings to this team. They've mentioned it a few times to us. Even in the JV and the lower classification programs, Schulenberg brings a good crowd, and, and, and it's nothing better for the kids to turn around and see a lot of people up there supporting them, and it gives them that extra boost sometimes when they need it. Yeah, I talked to Coach Hoosman after that Houston game, and he thought that was, uh, was such a big boost for, for, for the ball club to see so many fans make the trip over to Schulenberg. Well, that was almost like a playoff atmosphere in a big stadium in the city and a big team, big game, a lot of hype around it and so on. Here is Schrammick's kick, taken at the 20-yard line to the 30. 
And number four is there to greet him, Jared Schrammick, the young man who kicked off. Bezetsny. Oh, was it Bezetsny? Okay. That's a tough cookie, I'll tell you that. You're right, it was Bezetsny. Kurt Bezetsny who met him there and brought him down. Kurt's not blessed with a lot of size, and a, but he's, he was given a big heart and, a, and an excellent find for the football. He's a fine addition to this team and a, a big loss if we'd happen to lose Kurt. 39-yard line is where the ball is spotted, and uh, Shiner will work from there, first and 10. Two receivers to the left, one to the right side. Handoff up the middle to Cowan. He's had a tough night tonight. There's That's been nothing. There's been flat nothing. Uh, the way it's going, they're going to have less than 100 yards this game, and that's about unheard of on a Shiner offense. And that's a total yards, too. And that, Hernandez met him there at the line, may have picked up a yard, but that uh, Shiner offense, you're right, has just been totally, totally dominated tonight. Second and 10 for Shiner. Clock runs, 8.55 to go. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Two in the backfield now as Werner has joined Cowan back there. Quarterback keeps it, and Shepard brings him down right around the line of scrimmage. Well, it was a good move by the quarterback there to avoid the, the, the deeper loss, should we, might, should we say. But uh, again, we're talking about that pursuit. The linebackers filled in where they were supposed to be, and the, there was nowhere for him to go. Shepard, excuse me, as soon as he turned around, Shepard was right in his face, right where you needed to be to take care of business. Shepard comes out of the game defensively for Schulenberg now. 8.17 to go. Clock runs. Schulenberg leading 37 to nothing. Shiner has just been totally dominated here. Schulenberg's just, uh, just taken every aspect of the game away from them. Ventura, the quarterback, barks the signals here. Oh, he is met as soon as he got the ball. What a play by Paco Valenzuela. 155 pound senior. No, that was too quick. How did he get into that quick? The ball was barely there. Just a tremendous play by Valenzuela. He just stormed right past him. He barely took a few steps back to drop back and he was on him. Clock continues to run, 7.35 and Shiner is forced to punt the ball away again. Shiner is just, uh, or Schulenberg has just taken every aspect of the game away from the Comanches tonight. Cow into punt, high punt. Jackson waits for it, calls for a fair catch at the 31 yard, or make that the 29 yard line, and uh, Schulenberg will set up shop there. Let's go ahead with a few more of our sponsors real quick here. The Record Rack, Barry and Melissa Shepard, Carrie and Laurie Bauer, Gene, Barbara and Christine Ginnert, Casper's Royce and, and Jeanette Cujay, Casper's Department Store, clothing and shoes for the family, Frank Supply, Swanky Baumgarten Funeral Home, Mark, Brian, and Bill Clazel, Schulenberg Glass, Mike and Phyllis Uritza, Shiloh Engineering, Welburn Petroleum, Hill Bank and Trust Company, serving your local area for more than 100 years. Sarton and Company to start out first and 10 from the 29-yard line with 7.17 to go in the ball game. Schulenberg leading 37 to nothing. Sarton barks the signals, hand off to Houston, nowhere to run. Brought down right at the line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up a second and ten, one of the few times tonight that there was absolutely nowhere to go. Well, uh, that's a tribute to that line, as we said before. Uh, they're doing an excellent job, as they've done every week. Uh, the only time you could say that they didn't have a, a, an outstanding or dominating game was the Wheatley game when they're facing the 260, 270-pounders, play after play and getting beat on. Even in the end, we still came out and, uh, and, and showed the you know, the best for wear there, but uh, that, that took a big toll on us. And that's been another, and we'll get back to those comments in just a moment as Sarton barks the signals for second and ten. Here's a quick pitch to Houston. Big running room this time, but now it's cut off quickly. He gets uh, about six, maybe seven on the play, brought down at the 37-yard uh, line. You talked about the, uh, the offensive line. You go back to the great teams we talked about earlier, 88, 89, 90, and so forth, uh, along with the great quarterbacks we've had that we've mentioned earlier been some great offensive lines oh we've definitely you know it's been a it's been a pleasure to watch one position i've been really enjoyed to watch is the center we've had some small centers comparatively to other teams every year starting with with dale kutach with uh oh, oh I, I, his name's missing me right now job and so on and center little guys that have done an excellent job in there well, Bozel's been starting uh, since he was a sophomore at center. Here's Houston. He breaks it open to midfield. Now to the 45-yard line, to the 40, and is going to run out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. 
Another big run. I like his idea there of getting out of bounds and, and saving the lick right there. This game's out of hand. There's no use to, take, to invite some punishment where they're, they had two men get it with the sideline as, as their ally. And uh, no use to see him take a, a, a good lick and, and, and possibly risk an injury and, and set him out for a week or two. Steven Adams checks into the game offensively right now. And uh, here comes Steven Sarton to the line of scrimmage now. Reigns and right in the backfield. Adams is wide to the left side. Jackson is wide right. Hand off to Reigns. Good running room. Tripped up, but he continues to run hard and gets to about the 32-yard line. He just seems like he doesn't want to go down too easy. Yeah, he runs with a lot of determination. Clock runs, 5.30 to go in the ball game. Schulenberg leading 37 to nothing. Ball is spotted at the 32. It'll bring up a second and seven. Jason Houston's out of the game right now and probably will remain out. I'm sure he's had a, he's had a full night. He's a little tired, I'm sure, winded. And uh, he puts a lot into effort into his running. Got about, uh, I guess, about 140 yards. 147 rushing. yards. Schrammick is wide to the left side. Here's a gift to Reigns. Reigns looking for a running room. Stays in bounds. The clock continues to run. And I think uh, that uh, is going to make Coach Hoosman happy, the fact that that clock continues to run. He'd like to just get out of here with, with no injuries. He was uh, that's, that's a lot of testimony right there to David Reigns to have enough sense to stay in bounds there and don't make this thing last any longer than it has to and let's just get away with this W and get out of here. 4.40 to go. Clock runs, 37 nothing. Schulenberg totally dominating this district game. Schulenberg will go 3-0 and in district, and Shiner will fall 1-2 and in district. Sarton barks the signals. Wright and Reigns in the backfield. Give to Wright. Wright looks for running room, stood up. He's fighting for that yardage, but he's short of the first down. Interesting decision here. Do you think we ought to go for it? We're too close to punt. There's no doubt about that. Maybe we might let Shepard try a long field goal. Heck, he might go for it just to keep the ball on the ground and maybe run some more time off this. Yeah, I think you'll see Coach Houston go for it here and just keep the ball on the ground and hope he can pick up that one about a yard and a half. Well, I see Houston talking to him on the sideline. He might want to try to get in there and, and, and get a few more yards here. I'm sure he wants the ball. Uh, he's going to keep save him out. Jared Schrammick coming into the game with the play from Coach Houston. We're going to call it fourth and two here. Schulenberg would like to keep possession of the ball and run the clock out. If they're going to do that, they need to pick up two yards here in a first down. Reigns, I believe he got it. Uh, he's a little short, I believe, Dan. It's a, it depends on the spot. I think he's going to be a little short. Made a good second effort there after he was hit. I think it's going to be awful close, Jeff. First down the other way, they're showing not even a measurement. Okay, you're right. Shiner holds, and Shiner takes over. It's a good effort, though. It's a good decision. It took some more time off the clock, and, and with the punt, you might only get, if you got in the end zone, you're only losing, gaining five yards on the, uh, with the, with the amount of time it took off the clock, it's a good decision. Schulenberg totally dominating this ball game with 3.33 to go. They lead 37-0. Ventura brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers wide at the left side. I'm sure Shiner is thinking they'd like to get something on the scoreboard. They do not want to get shut out. Mahichek, I tell you, he's a man possessed out there. When he gets a chance to play, he lets you know he's out there. Brad Mahichek, 6'3", 145-pound senior. Yeah, and when he's been on the field, he's let his presence known. As our coaches are leaving the booth now, I think they've had a, a good night of this. Good to see Coach, uh, Coach Connolly Brown, also Coach Doug Stewart up here this evening. And uh, they, of course, done an excellent job relaying that information down to Coach Hoosman along the sidelines. Now we've got a timeout by Schulenberg, I believe. They're going to do some switching in there and get some players in uh, that normally don't get to play some positions. We're going to finish up with our sponsors here. We've got Watslavic Clinic and Pharmacy, Mr. B Fireworks, Tom Vargas, where you get more bang for your bucks. Hollis Duncan Insurance Agency, Hugo Holas and, and Schulenberg and Carl Duncan and Weimer. Frank's Restaurant, management and personnel, 65 years of superior food, IH10 and Highway 77. Chuck Brown Ford, Double B Foods Incorporated. Bubba and Karen Dagan, Don Blancett, Schulenberg Tires, Alfredo and Mildred Valenzuela, Victoria Bank and Trust, Prime Industries, and Mr. W.A. Farrick. Well, the Schulenberg Shorthorns, 37 to nothing, as uh, Shiner has the ball with a second and five now. I've just been informed by our stat. I'd like to thank Rodney Mahogany for helping us up here tonight. He's uh, done a fine job in keeping our stats. 
He just informed me that Shiner on the, on the last play has just hit exactly 100 yards for the night. That's total yards. Run. Total yards. That's incredible. The whole Shiner to that type of uh, low statistic is really remarkable. Second and five, 302 to go in the uh, in the ball game. Quarterback sneak. He's going to be a little short. Yeah, it's going to be third and short. Marek in on the defensive tackle for Schulenberg, along with Brian Valenzuela. Clock shows 2:45 to go, and it'll be third and one here. Shiner sending one receiver wide right, one receiver wide left. Here's a quick throw over the middle, complete, brought down by number 20, Todd Anders, a 170-pound junior for the Shorthorns. If we, get, if we get the ball back, Dan, be looking to see him in the backfield. He's a nice little hard runner as a junior, and he'll be a... A welcome addition next year to our backfield. It's been a fast-moving ball game, Jeff. Well, being with, the, with Shiner's running game, you expect it, and, and we've had good success on the ground to keep that clock running. Um, I, I expected that tonight with their type of uh, team they are, and uh, I enjoy it. It's fine with me. I enjoy these short games. Ventura, the quarterback, brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Here's a quick pitch to Werner. Werner around the left side. He may go all the way. Here comes Anders who run him down along with, uh, let's see, was that uh, Brian Valenzuela again? I believe it was, to he run down Bobby Werner. Well, you got to give him credit. He trailed on the play as a defensive lineman and came back to make that tackle. Excellent pursuit. There's no give up in the horn. And the... Uh, Shiner Comanches trying to get on the scoreboard here. That's one of their better runs of the night. Of course, most of the uh, first team for the Horns out of the game right now. Ball at the 35-yard line. Clock runs with a minute 30. Pitch around the right side. Nowhere to go. Marek in on the defensive tackle for Schulenberg along with... Uh, Let's see, who hit him first? Number seven, Eric Aiding. Well, you know, Dan, there's a lot of players that are playing out there now that would normally be starting defensive players for other schools but are getting their chance to play. They're fine offensive players in Schulenburg. That's why you don't see them on the defensive side of the ball. But playing for any other school, they'd probably be playing both ways and be pretty worn out by the end of the game. Yeah, there's no question. There's some fine athletes all the way through the roster of the Schulenburg Shorthorns. Here's the next play over the left side. Penalty markers. I think we may have a face mask. Oh, I think there's a little bit definite about that. I, you, you're going to have to give it a personal foul because he didn't let go, but uh, you, you can rest assured that it wasn't an intentional face mask, even though it's got to be called that way. But uh, I think every official in the, in, in, the, in the stadium saw that from even way up here. We could see that, but uh, that's going to happen. That's aggressive play. He was just reaching out to make the tackle. There wasn't anything malicious intended by it. Well, you know, uh, these Shorthorn fans uh, don't want Shiner to score, and there's 53 seconds to go. It's going to be interesting here, Jeff. There's a lot of pride in it for stake out here. That, that shutout would look mighty pretty on their record. Uh, that would give, give East Bernard something to think about, and Weimer give a little, little pride saying, hey, look, we scored against these Shorthorns. Shiner didn't score a point. Ball is spotted at the 15-yard line. 45 seconds to go. The clock runs. Let's see if the Horns can shut them out. This could be a moral victory for Shiner anyway, we look at it. Handoff, left side. Good looking tackle there by number 20. Todd Anders again. Todd Anders, a junior. As and we talked about before, a lot of these players would be playing, Dan, if it, you know, if it, if it just wasn't so much of an abundance of talent on this team. Will he put the first string uh, defense back in? I don't in? think so. I don't think so. Uh, he's got a lot of class, and uh, if they score, they score. That's, that's so be it. It needs to be that way. And uh, Coach David Hoosman is a fine, a fine gentleman, and uh, uh, he's going to give these kids their chance out there, too. And if they stop him, that's more power to them. The ball is on the nine-yard line. There are 28 seconds to go. It's second, and uh, we'll call it second and about five yards needed for a first down. Coach Hoosman talking to his, uh, to his men. There goes Sam Brown around the huddle saying, don't let them score. There's a lot of pride, like I said before, a lot of pride out there, and they don't want to see any scores happening here. They don't want to be able to see that goose egg still on the scoreboard near the end of the game here. 37 to nothing. 28 seconds to go. 
the Schulenberg defense trying to stop Shiner from scoring. Schulenberg has thoroughly dominated this football game. Ventura, the quarterback, barks the signals. Quick pitch over the left side. He's got some running room, but Good he's not going to get there. Marek gets him. Good play by Kevin Marek. Shiner's calling another timeout. 21 seconds to go. That might be their final timeout, I believe. I think they, did they call one earlier here when they were getting ready to drive in earlier in the, the half? I believe you're right. I so believe that's their third timeout, right? Okay. That I should be their final. Their final timeout. And it comes with 21 seconds to go. And they're looking at a third, and uh, we'll call it third and four. Or is it fourth and four? The scoreboard shows fourth and four. I do believe it's a third. Well, I'm not sure either. I lost track of a down if it is fourth down. Now the, uh, the linesmen still show third down. The scoreboard shows fourth down. We're going to go with the linesman. Uh, I believe the officials are going to correct it if it's wrong. But he looked back at it. It should be still third down. Okay, we're gonna yeah, he's holding up three. Okay, third down. Or is he holding up four? No, he's holding up three. Third down. Now they're changing it on the scoreboard. Third and four. 21 seconds. If he can just keep him in bounds here, look for him for a sweep or something. If they don't get the touchdown to be able to get out of bounds, because if not, they might have a chance to run this clock out. Here's a quick pass. It's going to be incomplete. incomplete. Uh, that may be uh, a lateral, but no, they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. It's going to bring up a fourth down nonetheless and uh, do or die play here. And Shiner may kick a field goal here. <laughs> Moral victory anyway, right? Yeah. They, uh, they're going to pass that up and try to get seven. There's no. <laughs> Fourth down and four for the Shiner Comanches. 16 seconds to go. The ball is at the nine yard line. Ventura, the quarterback for Shiner. He's had a tough night. He rolls to the right, holding against uh, Sh Shiner, not being called. He didn't get in. He fumbled the ball. Shiner got it back. But it might not be for the first down now, though. I think we'll get the ball because the fumble brought it back. And we'll be getting the ball. First down our way. That's it. Schillenberg takes over. A fine hit, but I wish I, did, I didn't see who made the hit. But, boy, they put a lick on him, and he caught that ball right up. It would have been pretty close, Dan, even without the, without the fumble if he'd have made it or not. Yeah, it uh, it would have been a heck of a heck of uh, very close, but as it is, Schulenberg will take over for the last five seconds of the ball game, and they are going to win the game 37 to nothing. What a convincing win! Well, if there's any doubters in the area of who's number one in the state right now, I think this pretty much quelled it. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Uh, and and you know, East Bernard's got to be thinking now what? We still get they, and they have to come here, which is Shorthorns Den, and I don't know. If, that's going to be a welcome place for anybody. Sarton will uh, just run out the clock here, and that's it. The game comes to an end. The Schulenberg Shorthorns convincingly defeat the Shiner Comanches 37 to nothing. And, Jeff, your thoughts on the game? Well, we were talking about at the Booster Club meetings earlier today. The Coach Hoosman was shaking like a leaf, and he's nervous. And everybody says when Hoosman's nervous, he's more dangerous than ever. Uh, Proved it again tonight. He, he came out with the, We didn't have to do anything really tricky, to tell you the truth. It was just pretty much a smash mouth football, and we're going to put it to you. You've got to stop our strength. In, in 2 8 football, if you have a well rounded team like Schulenberg does, where you can pass, you can run, you can do whatever, you're going to go a long way. A, a, a one dimensional team, as is you could see in Shiner's case this night, when they only had a, a total of 13 yards passing, is it, going to catch up with you, and a good team is going to be able to key on your running game, and that happened tonight and it showed in the final score. You just can't say enough about the coaching job that Coach Hoosman and his staff uh, has done uh, for a game such as this. As you mentioned, he was nervous. Uh, I remember a few years back when Maynard beat us in the regular season. He was like a different man the rest of that week. Uh, he took it personally, and then when we met them in the playoffs about, what, about five weeks later, we totally dominated that game. He doesn't like to lose, and that shows. Well, he, le he learns something from every game, and he uh, applies a little more, and, and Maybe make some more improvements. Every week they get a little better, and that's uh, that's a pretty scary thought when you, when they're when they're pretty good already, and there's there's room to get a little better. 
uh, the, the scoreboard's going to light up, and, and, and some of the people around the state are going to say, ooh, Schulenberg, Shiner. That was supposed to be one of the 2A games of the week. And uh, Shiner had to come out and play this game. This Their back was against the wall, and, and we pretty much showed them, hey, we don't care what your position is. We're going to play our game. Just a, just a great game plan, and uh, the, the young men were totally prepared. Just a, just a great uh, domina, dominating uh, night for the Schulenberg Shorthorns. Well, uh, if we can get in a few minutes, we'll take a few minutes and uh, be able to get some final statistics for you and, and to really show how dominating the game really was statistically as well as just what you saw on the field here. We'll get back with that and uh, hopefully in a few minutes and, and get some final thoughts. Schulenberg, Texas, the Schulenberg Shorthorns thoroughly have dominated the Shiner Comanches and they come away with this one with a 37 to nothing uh, win. Jeff Prosky, all Schulenberg tonight. Very much so. Uh, a very convincing win. Much more than anybody anticipated, both sides of the field, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. The total statistics really show it. We have, uh, on the Schulenberg side, on, on the rushing, we have Houston, 18 carries, 147 yards, another fine night by him. Considering the Shiner team is allowing an average of 126 total yards the whole game, a one man blew that on his own for Schulenberg. Uh, Wright, another nice night, four carries, excuse me, five carries for 23 yards. Reigns, near the end of the game, Eight carries for 37 yards and a touchdown. Sarton, six carries for minus 12 on some of those sacks and so on that we had to, and some of those kneel downs and whatever you want to call it there. Passing, he was seven for 11 for 171 yards. 